If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I post a new Tom Brady video every day. So we get there and then like just slowly we just see him getting tired. And the whole time we're all thinking like we look at each other like I'm not gonna get tired, you're not gonna get tired. We felt like we had But well, the conditioning's a big thing with the Pats. Man, it's we the ran, most underrated thing. We that ran they the do. hill every yeah. single day, even going into the Super Bowl to the day we got on the plane. The day before we got on the plane, we ran the hill one more time to go down to Houston. And it's just like one of those things like, really? What the f like it's cold, the hill is frozen, you can't get on there, it's like you're still running it. And then but those moments where we just felt like we did more than they did. Yeah. So we we weren't gonna get You're tired. feeding off it. Yeah, we started feeding off of it. What's so, Brady like during this whole thing? Uh he's kinda like Tom calm. Cruise and Mission Impossible. Yeah. He just calm and connected. Yeah, he's just super calm and I think his thing is he knows that like he feeds off like he knows everyone feeds off his energy. So he's really like, hey, you know, he called very articulate with the play. And like, hey, this is what you got. And Tom's one. The thing I love about Tom is because you come to Tom and be like, hey, Tom, I'm open. And most quarterbacks are like, yeah, 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 everybody's open. And like, Tom was like, oh, yeah, I see it right here. I, does he see it? Does he not see it? Who knows? But he makes you feel like, you know, he, he knows what you're talking about. Right, so like, he gives a shit. There's been games where, there's been games where you know, I ain't get – Maybe I got one pass thrown my way. And after the game, Tom was like, he'll come and he showed me like, hey, I should have got you. I should got you the ball at least four more times today. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a great job. We did a great job getting open during this game. I just missed you. So it's nothing that you're doing is me. And you're just kind of like, well, shit, all right. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's Tom Brady. That's pretty good stuff. Oh, that's how he is. Tell me one of your favorite stories about your time in New England that fans here would really appreciate. When I first moved to town, one of my favorite things was how welcoming the team was. When I first moved to town, I didn't have a place to stay, so I used to sleep on Gronk's couch. And it just shows you the type of person that Gronk was. He's like, oh, you can sleep on my couch. So I was crashing on, here's a millionaire crashing on another millionaire's couch. <laughs> <laughs> was it a nice couch? <laughs> It was okay. It's not my taste, but yeah, it's Gronk's taste, as you could imagine. So yeah, I'm an Italian leather guy, you know. Gronk is an American leather guy. That just sums it up, right? So, <laughs> but yeah. All right, which QB had the best sense of humor? Eli. Which QB had the weirdest habits? Oh, no, I'll get that curse. I'll get that close to him. All right, who, who would be best to be on a deserted island with? Tom Brady, because I feel like someone can save him. <laughs> Who's most likely to be afraid of spiders? Romo. Who throws the best ball? Oh, that's different. Ca most catchable ball? Yeah, catchable ball. Tom, the prettiest pass? Romo. The best arm strength? Cutler. All what right. brother score? Well, you did beat him. He got 42. That's all I was trying to do. You said you would be stuck on a deserted island with Tom Brady. Yeah, because he's the only quarterback that someone would come save. Like, if Tom is missing, you know you have a chance. If you were Tom and you're on the island, he's just like, oh, yeah, my pals are coming on their yacht. They'll be here tomorrow. So let's just go out here and get... And he looks like the type of guy that probably knows how to crack open, you know, crustaceans and things like that. And just be like, look, that's not edible, Marty. I'm like, oh, thanks, Tom, you know? So I'm like, if I'm there with Cutler, me and Cutler would just be there forever. Like, damn, bro, they're not going to get either one of us. They're happy to leave Cutler yeah. out on the island. Me and Cutler. Like, the world don't really roll me out there. Your brother wouldn't come save you? Yeah, but he's actually one of the brothers that could swim, so. So. I could swim too, though. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, Tom, definitely Tom. I mean, that was a time where one day, like, even at, like, our practices are set up for, like, failure and things like that. And there's days where the defense will be installing a defense that'll just have our number that day, right? Yeah. And Josh McDaniels, even at practice, Josh McDaniels, the next day, him, Tom, our whole offense would be like, we're going to go kick our defense ass today. And we'll go over like yeah. 17 for 17 at practice. And we're high-fiving each other and they're mad. So that was how we were every single – the competition level at yeah, that's the Patriots is one of the highest places I've been. 
competing, like in a weight room. Like you go in the weight room, there's it's like college. You got guys' numbers on there, like really? who squat is the most and things like that. So the competition that they that is in the culture there is like one of the biggest things. Like Patrick Chung, like the, if I run a good route on Patrick Chung, he'll high five, he'll shake my hand, but I can see in his eyes he's just like. I'm going to get you next time. Yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, same thing with Dev. Like, me and Devin McCourty, like, we'll go at it and things like that. So it was just like, yeah, it was true. just this this environment of competition. And a lot of teams don't have that. A lot of teams want to preach competition, competition, competition. We're going to go out there and compete, and we're going to be the best. We want the best guys to compete and go, we're going to win the game because that's what we do here. <laughs> they don't really do it. Martellus Bennett, Patriot, drew a whole bunch of pictures of his teammates. We got their take on maybe what he could have done a little bit better. Tom, what do you think of Marty Bennett's picture of you here. Did Smarty draw that? Yeah, Marty drew. What do you think? I love Marty, man. I miss Marty. I wish he was here with us now. He's a great guy, man. I love that guy. I always thought his last name was Soldier. Soldier. <laughs> yeah, what do you think's missing from that? Anything? Get the hair coming out the back, maybe? Well, I think the whole body's missing from that. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's missing a mullet. Maybe I could add a mullet in here. Can I, can I draw it, a scribble it on? We mullet? see that mullet, by the way? Yeah. Let's see that thing right here. Off a little bit. Yeah. That's a mean mullet right there. Well, I'm trying. I'm here in Minnesota, and I think they can appreciate a good mullet. What's missing on this, you think? Is this enough? I would not draw that like that, <laughs> so you know. I feel like Tom is one of those guys, as long as he feels like he could compete at a high level, he will. Uh, I mean, Vince Carter's in his 22nd year of the NBA. I feel like him and Tom, you know, they probably had, they probably been hanging, you know, there's just old guys playing sports. So, and then you get a part where it's kind of like what you do now, right? If you do something for 20 years, it's like who you are as a human being. So uh, that's just something. And Tom just loves, this is why Tom, this is why I think Tom would ne doesn't retire. Because the thing that Tom enjoys the most in life is winning. I've never seen somebody who just wants to win. Like, right? You have a lot of quarterbacks who who get upset when they don't get to throw the ball as much. But if Tom, if we're running the ball 100 times and the ball is working, he's going to run it because it gives him the best possibility of winning. And I think that's the difference in him and personality. He does whatever it takes to win. And he just loves that feeling. Me and Tom connected over a home decor. So, um... <laughs> So we both like we like we both like interior decoration. But that was my favorite part of his Facebook show. I like seeing his house. I mean, like, yeah. oh, look at what Tom did with his office. Yeah, he had a Facebook show. Yeah, Tom Facebook. had a Facebook show yeah. called Tom versus Time, and it was like kind of like uh, I don't know. It was a little bit like an infomercial, but it was also like really this is his family and this is this this is how he prepares for games and all this stuff. It was good. Tom's a great. guy. I recommend it. Like Tom's a guy. Like I feel like. After football, there's not many guys I play with that, you know, that I would talk to. But Tom would text me. Well, mostly we DM each other on the IG. But uh, he'll text me out the blue and just be like, man, what you doing? up? What you doing, Marty? Like, because he always knows I'm doing cool shit. So I think he lives vicariously through me sometimes. Tom is one of the, he is the greatest player to play in the NFL. It's an opportunity to um, just talk to life. I think Tom has a lot of experiences that I haven't experienced, and I have some experiences that he have not experienced. And I think just being fathers and being husbands and talking about life, I think that's the greatest thing you can do with your teammate is to learn him as an individual. You know, you see people from the outside, and you want to get to know them as a person. And I think Tom does a great job of connecting with his teammates um, every single day. And I think personally, I think that's been good for me to be able to come in and have a guy like Tom just talking about stories and just having a good time. I think, you know, football take care of yourself, but building that camaraderie with your teammates, that's the most important thing for me on this team is to earn everybody's trust from the top of the organization, from the media staff to the training staff, just to let them know what type of individual I am and try to do that every single day. And I think talking to Tom allows me to do that. And I, I take those days because you never know when you get a chance to talk to guys like that and just have that type of time. It's, it's cool, you know, so it takes time to get to know me as an individual. Uh, and I love that. Have you seen Marty Bennett's picture of you by any I chance? I have seen that, no. Let's get a little critique right here. Amadola. That's awesome. What do you think of that? That's pretty sweet. We're both from Texas, both from Houston, so we see a lot of armadolas. Have you seen Marty Bennett's drawing of you by any chance? <laughs> what, uh, the, the Swiss Army knife yeah. thing? Yeah. I'm gonna show it to you. <laughs> My dog James got to be something else, man. <laughs> He's a, he's much more than a Swiss Army knife. I mean, it's pretty good. It looks like he drew it with his finger, so that's a, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty good job. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think it might be too big. 
Biceps too big? Oh, yeah. That's People have seen your workout videos. I don't know if that's too big. Yeah, see, look at that. That's almost all the way up to the wrist. Why don't you critique this for me? Yeah, uh, well, I'll tell you what. That is a terrible picture of me. He did terrible. Um, I don't know what those dots are there. My body is a lot more smoother than that. And uh, he needs to go back to the drawing board if he thinks that's, that's me. Literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> that's not even... It's not even feasible. <laughs> Have you seen Marty Bennett's picture of you by any chance? No, I missed it. Well, let me uh, get a critique from you if I could. What, what do you think of this? That's about right. Nah, that's about right. <laughs> that's about right. Did he build, man? Yeah. Now, Marty's a pretty creative guy, so that's, yeah, that's good. I don't think that's Marty. That's Marty. <laughs> Marty did it. Well, he has a good. he's doing a good job with the arrows, all right? If you could get Tom Brady to sign a jersey, certainly you don't want it to be a fake one, right? Hey, Paul, you know, I'd love a signed Tom Brady jersey. Of course, if it is legit, and the law enforcement experts that we talked to tonight said if you're going to look for a jersey to buy, there's some telltale signs where if it's defective, if it feels cheap, you should probably know pretty fast it's a fake. For criminals, the Super Bowl, to put it in clear terms, is their Super Bowl too, but to scam customers into buying fake merchandise. Only one item on this table isn't a knockoff. So this is a real legitimate jersey, and you can see if you touch the material, the quality of it, the thickness, the texture, you can feel it. Special Agent Brian Winehouse is with the Department of Homeland Security's National Intellectual Property Rights Coordination Center. He says official NFL gear has a very specific hologram with a serial number that is hard to fake. There's actually colors in the football. There's colors in the background. And those small details are key to spotting something counterfeit. They're always going to use inferior stitching methods of manufacture. So in the stitching, you might see this one's very crisp and clean. Everything's separated. But if you look in comparison, the stitching and the lettering are sort of connected, whereas on this one, they're not. You're going to come across these fakes in any number of places. And there's ways that you can protect yourself by taking a look at the fine details. But know that if a deal seems too good to be true, it probably is. So you can buy these replica rings, but if they're counterfeit, they're going to cost you 15 to $20. The real deal, probably six to $700. And then they go up in price after that. And the thing is, you look at all of these rings and they're made of metals that are pretty dangerous. Some of them could have cadmium, lead, and even mercury. That's it for this video. I post a new Tom Brady video every day. So please like and subscribe. That way you'll always have a new Tom Brady video to watch every single day.